Are you new to the world of digital 3D? Maybe you've heard of the free open source software called Blender, and you want to use it, but you have no idea where to start. Well, you've found the right place to learn the first steps. In this series, we'll go over all the basics, from getting around the interface and manipulating objects, to managing lighting and materials, even rendering your first scene. What is Blender exactly? Blender is a free, open source 3D creation suite of software. It supports the entirety of the 3D pipeline, modeling, rigging, animation, simulation, rendering, compositing and motion tracking, even video editing and game creation. Okay, let's get the boring stuff out of the way. If you're going to use Blender, you'll need to download it first. To do that, open up your favorite web browser and go to www.blender.org. Click the download button beneath the cover banner, select your OS, hit download again and run the installer once it is finished downloading. Blender 2.92 is the latest at the time of this recording, and the installer is 169 megabytes. When you open up Blender for the first time, you will be greeted by the splash screen. Since this is the first time Blender is running, it will display the quick setup options. Here you can change the language, shortcut scheme, selection method, what the spacebar does, and the visual theme. And if you have a previous version of Blender installed, you can click here to load the settings you already have. I'm going to keep all of these at their defaults, with the exception of the spacebar. I like it to bring up the search. When you're ready, click Save New Settings. Now you will see the standard splash screen that displays each time you open Blender. Here you can start a new file using one of the predefined workspace layouts, open an existing file, or recover the last session in the event that Blender has crashed. The right-hand column lists the last few Blend files that you were working on. Select General in the left-hand column, and let's get into the interface. This is the default layout of the Blender interface. The screen is divided into editors. The large primary editor here is the 3D viewport, with its tool and sidebar menus. This is where the majority of your time will be spent. By default, it contains the three types of objects you will need to render a scene, a camera, a lamp, and a mesh object. Up here we have the outliner. This is where every component of your scene is listed and organized into collections. Collections work a lot like layers in a 2D application like GIMP, Krita, or Photoshop. They can be enabled and disabled, rearranged and searched. Just below the outliner is the properties editor where you will find a lot of properties dealing with things like render and output, the world, objects, modifiers, simulations, and a whole lot more. It would bore you to go over it all right now without an idea of how they pertain to what you're trying to do. So we'll cover properties as we use them. This is the timeline. This is a critical editor to be familiar with when animating, but we're not animating anything just yet, so we'll close it. The way to close an editor is to grab the corner of an editor that shares a common edge and drag over that edge. Gone. But where did it go? Well, there are more editors than just four. There are 21 editors, including settings. All of them are technically open all the time. We just choose which to display at any given time, depending on what we are working on at the time. Any editor can be resized by clicking and dragging the edge and split or closed by dragging the corner toward the editor or over the edge, respectively. You could display all of the editors at once if you really wanted to. Now that we know how to close and split editors, how do we open a different one than what is already on the screen? To do that, click on the small drop-down menu in the upper left of any open editor and select the one you want. There are a number of predefined layouts known as workspaces listed across the top of the window. These are geared towards specific stages of common workflows. You can choose to use or ignore them. There is no workspace you cannot reproduce on your own. In fact, you can save layouts that you have created as custom workspaces if you like. Finally, most editors have a header at the top with menus, information, and buttons having to do with that editor's function. There is one last area to cover before we can sink our teeth into all that ooey gooey blender goodness, and that is preferences. To do that, click on edit 
and select Preferences. I'll go over the categories here briefly and we'll change a few things that will make some functions more intuitive. Don't think that you need to change any of this though, these are preferences after all. First is interface. The one thing that may interest you here is resolution scale. Changing this may help you make better use of your screen depending on its size, resolution, ratio, or if you just can't see it well. Themes is just that, the visual appearance of the interface. There are presets to choose from, or you can customize every facet of the interface to your heart's content. Be careful though, you don't want your interface to look vastly different from any tutorials you will be following while learning the ropes. Viewport contains some things you may want to change if you want less information on the viewport, or if you just have a lower end machine. Lights. You would load custom lighting setups here. In editing, there is little for us to look at now. I do, however, keep the Enter Edit Mode box unchecked. We won't be changing anything in the Animation tab right now. Add-ons is a huge section to cover. In short, add-ons provide added functionality on top of Blender's default capabilities. Most are designed around making certain repeated actions or complex workflows easier. You can see here that there are a lot of add-ons already included with Blender. Some are active, others are not. We will be activating some of these later as they become useful. Input. If you do not have a number pad on your keyboard, you can tick the box next to Emulate Numpad. Ticking this box would allow you to use the number keys across the top of the keyboard in lieu of a numpad. The importance of the number pad will become evident as we get into creating our scene. Navigation. I like to enable orbit around selection. This makes whatever object is selected the pivot point for your view. Efficient use of Blender relies heavily on shortcut keys for almost everything. You can remap any of these keys in KeyMap. System. If you have a graphics card other than the built-in one, you will want to enable it as a Cycles render device. If you have the system memory for it, and I mean RAM, not your video card's memory, also called VRAM, turn those undo steps up to the max of 256. As far as save and load and file paths go, we will not change anything here. That's enough groundwork to go on for now. Hopefully all these preliminary details have not left you feeling trepidatious, but rather excited to learn and get a better grasp on the subject. Blender can be intimidating at first, especially if you are new to 3D in general. Hang in there, follow along, and press on. You'll know what you are doing in no time. Now, let's start learning the actual tools of Blender. Hey guys, if you found this video useful, hit like and consider subscribing to the channel and you can turn on that notification bell too so that you don't miss future videos. Until next time, I'm Carl with Blender Forge.